Welcome to the Smart Business Revolution. 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 Do you want a revolution? Yeah. You say you want a revolution. Revolution. The revolution. It's going on right now. Welcome to The Revolution, the Smart Business Revolution podcast, where we ask today's most successful entrepreneurs to share the tools and strategies they use to build relationships and connections to grow their revenue. Now, now, your host for The Revolution, John Corcoran. All right, welcome everyone. John Corcoran here. I'm the host of this show, and you guys know my story. I'm a recovering political hack, recovering lawyer. Spent years working in politics, including as a speechwriter with stints working in the Clinton White House and for a California governor. Spent years also practicing law, and 10 years ago, I discovered this medium where I get to talk to smart individuals, entrepreneurs, authors, speakers, you name it, and I've been doing it ever since because over 10 years, I've had the privilege of talking with so many amazing individuals from top CEOs, founders, entrepreneurs of companies and organizations ranging from YPO, DEO, Activation Blizzard, Lending Tree, you name it. I'm also the co-founder of Rise25, where we help B2B businesses with the strategy and production they need to create a podcast and content marketing that produces tremendous ROI and connects them with our ideal prospects and referral partners. And I'm excited today. My guest is Alinka Rutkowska, and Alinka is the CEO of Leaders Press, it's a USA Today and Wall Street Journal bestselling press. They help individuals to create books from scratch and helps them to launch them to bestseller status. They have a 100% success rate. So we'll ask her about that. And she's worked with all kinds of top business leaders from Po Chung, the co-founder of DHL International, uh, Mark Nurendine, I think I'm saying that correctly, the CEO of Bull Outdoor Products and a bunch of others. And their releases have landed on bookshelves together with Nobel Prize winners and World Economic Forum speakers. And her mission is to help a thousand entrepreneurs share their wisdom with the world by 2030. And so we're gonna launch into her story, how she got into this. But first, before we get into that, this episode is brought to you by Rise25 Media, where we help B2B businesses to get clients, referrals, and strategic partnerships with Done For You Podcasts and content marketing. If you're listening to this, and you've ever thought, eh, should I do a podcast? I've been saying yes for many years. One of the best things I've ever done, I get to talk to smart people like Alinka here today and get to get my questions asked, answered, which is wonderful. Uh, so Alinka, let's, let's hop over to you. Super excited to talk to you about this. We've chatted many times before, but never had the opportunity to interview you before. So how does one get started with helping other people to write books? What was the first story? We were joking about it beforehand because I asked you about it. And you said, I, I don't really want to talk about it. So that just piqued my interest. So <laughs> what, was, what was the first uh, you got involved in writing books. John, so excited to be here. Yeah, the best thing to say is I don't want to talk about it. And then <laughs> that's when the questions start coming. My first book, I wrote it over a decade ago, and I was working in the corporate world at the time. And I just felt like uh, I reached some sort of glass ceiling and didn't feel like that was the place where I belonged. So I wrote this book. It was a self-improvement book. I think I wrote it for myself because I was going through some sort of quarter life crisis. Mm. But let's not talk about that. <laughs> let's talk about the book. Um, the book actually started selling really well and it made me more in royalties than my corporate salary. So that's wow. what got that me excited. Is, that is really impressive. Yeah. Was it, did you traditionally publish it or was it through Amazon? No, I self-published it. That wow. was the first time I heard about self-publishing when my colleague told me about it. He actually mentioned Tim Ferriss. He said, you know, there's this guy who does all these crazy things. Like he goes to Argentina and wins a tango competition. And, you know, he just danced for 15 minutes and he's self-publishing these books. I'm like, what? You can self-publish? I don't need a gatekeeper. I don't need anybody's permission. When I first heard about that, you know, I just got super excited because it's the entrepreneurial spirit in me. You know, I, I didn't have to ask anybody to, to allow me to do it. I just went for it. And since I had a marketing background, I studied business. I worked in marketing departments and big corporations. So I had this, you know, leverage. I had this advantage that I used. And I also think there was an element of luck in it. So that got me really excited. I thought, you know, big corporation, I don't need you anymore. <laughs> I can, you know, take care of myself on my own right now. And it is naive to believe that you could, you know, just live off of the royalties of one book forever. 
but the eventually start was probably really Peter, strong. It probably, it probably peters down eventually. So yeah, it does. It, it does later on. It yeah. does, but I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you didn't so, yeah. have any other service or coaching or consulting or anything like that. That was okay. All right. Not so at it's first. just the royalties. Got it. Okay. Not at first. So yeah. what did you do in that gap then when the, when the Royals started to peter off, did you write another book? Yes. I started writing more books. I was playing with the genres a little bit. I was a new mom, so I wrote children's books, picture books. I had an interesting marketing experience with those. I sold a lot in China. I sold foreign rights there. Um, so, you know, signed an amazing agreement with a Chinese publisher. You know, when there's a lot of, there's a lot of them in China. So when they publish, you know, they print a lot of copies. Mm. So that was a huge break for me. That was really, really good. Um, then at a certain point, I published How I Sold 80,000 Books. Mm. And that put me in the spotlight as a book marketing expert. That was, you know, one of those uh, moments when I felt like I reached uh, the, next, the next level. Then there were many more. <laughs> but I think that was an important one. You know, that first book on my subject matter, um, that's when things started happening. And, and, and was, sure that, they, was that book designed to get clients to help them to write books? No, not yet. Not at mm-hmm. first. So it was a process. That was more to help people market their own books. So it was more for the self-published writer mm-hmm. at that time. And that was 2015. And um, I don't remember if I had a course there. I don't think I had a course yet. Mm-hmm. Or something to monetize. I mm-hmm. did some, you know, I started with some coaching. Um, but then eventually I learned to, you know, put together the whole funnel. So I had the course and I had the coaching and then I had the summit. And then eventually I went to a mastermind um, in London with Dean Jackson. And uh, there was a question that he asked us. What could be the number, what could be the biggest value that you could offer to your customer if you didn't have to worry about the price point? So don't don't worry about what your service would cost. Just what would you offer that would be so valuable and that would answer, that would solve all their problems? And I thought that would be if I could help them from the beginning. Because you know, when people would come to me with their books and they wanted me to market them, I had to ask them to make a lot of changes. Mm. Because they were not, you know, the, the title didn't work, the cover was terrible, the description, you know, was not attractive. So there were a lot of foundational elements that needed to be changed. So I thought, how about I help them from the start? And then we niched it down to uh, business people and entrepreneurs and uh, put together um, Leaders Press. That's where it was born. That's where I bought the URL, <laughs> leaderspress.com in London at that mastermind. And I remember Dean said, I can't believe this is this hasn't been taken. Like mm-hmm. it's still there. Yeah. So I got my ten dollar or whatever domain. Uh, and that's how we got started helping entrepreneurs turn their ideas into bestsellers. And was the plan from the beginning to build out a team to write these books, or was it something where you um you know kind of realized after a little while that geez, I I, I got, you know, I'm gonna spread myself too thin if I'm the one writing all these books. I knew I would never write them myself. So I always knew I would get ghostwriters on board to help me and that I would be there at the beginning for the strategy. Um, then let the, I, I, the first book that we did, I, I did the interviews with the uh, entrepreneur. <laughs> that was the first and last. And I started getting help, uh, you know, started building my team. Um, and then I never wrote a single book for my clients, always got um, ghostwriters to do that. And then I would come back for the, launch of the book Mm -hmm. and as we started growing uh, i know we started building our team so now we have a bunch of interviewers interviewers and ghostwriters and project managers and marketing uh, marketing people so uh we've grown i had to delegate i mean i i get to delegate a lot of the tasks that i'm good at but my time is better spent doing other things and and that's a challenge in itself so what what have some of the big challenges been for you as you've figured out what pieces to delegate and what pieces to keep on your plate and how to manage a growing team? You know, I think there's an, a big ego element. Um, you know, when you think of marketing, I think of myself as the marketing person, like I'm the marketing genius. <laughs> and, uh, you know, at a certain point, I have to step back and teach 
uh, my team members what I've learned, but also let them step in with what they know, you know, with what they've learned elsewhere and, and let them take over. So there's that for sure, you know, not able to refer to myself as, you know, the marketing mastermind here. Um, although I still have a big impact on that. Another thing I think is, um, you know, letting people into my personal accounts, like, you know, my email provider, um, I still respond to my email myself. Like nobody's in my inbox yet, <laughs> uh, but I had a um, you know hard time giving those passwords and logins away so that people could manage my accounts. But it is something that needs to be done, or you know, otherwise right. I would um, you know uh, I wouldn't be able to to run this business. It's like it's like I say all the time. You know, your biggest skill eventually becomes your biggest bottleneck because the thing that you're good at is the last thing you want to give up. And then it's what holds you back. Um, yeah. You know, I, I realize I, I should probably take a step backwards because at the beginning of this conversation, you said, you know, you can't just depend on a book for royalties, but I know there's a lot of people out there who think I'm going to write a book. I'm just going to get a bunch of royalties. I can just sit back, put my feet up. Right. So if you're not depending on a book for royalties then talk to us a little bit more about why to do a book and how to leverage it. Right. So I have a funny story related to what you just said. I was at a at a conference and uh, one of the attendees asked me, uh, related to my USA Today bestselling status, she asked, um, when you become a USA Today bestselling author, do you become a millionaire? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, you know what? These are two separate projects. <laughs> one of them is you do something to become a millionaire. Then the other one is the USA Today. People often spend money, more money than they make royalties to get on those lists wow so what to look at if not at royalties well i figured out i guess pretty early on in my career that you know you need to have something beyond books and so now i make sure that we have a funnel in every book that we publish and also for our clients so very often we need to educate them a little bit explaining to them that you know when you uh when we do your book inside there's going to be a link to uh, either your landing page or to a quiz or maybe to a um, calendar where people can continue their relationship with you. And so we've managed to put that in every single book, uh, except for one, <laughs> the book that we did for the co-founder of DHL International. He said, I'm not interested in building my business <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, anymore. Understood. That makes a billion dollar business. So yeah. I think he's good. They're fine. Yeah, exactly. Um, and what does that funnel look like? I mean, it could be as simple as just, you know, here's a here's my website uh, or here's my email address or does it need to be more sophisticated or does it vary? Yeah, so it can be uh, more or less uh, elegant, I guess. Uh, in How I Sold 80,000 Book, we have a sort of in-your-face page which says free video training, go here link. So it's pretty... Uh, pretty visible and outsource your book which is you know our lead gen and lead conversion book for leaders press we uh it's more subtle so we don't have the big in your face ad we actually say something along these lines um at leaders press we take care of everything for you go to outsourcemybook.com to have us take you and your idea under our wing and that's uh, within the text of the book and, yeah. you know, we say it a couple of times so that, you know, people can at a certain point say, okay, enough, <laughs> right. do it for me. Right. And do you, does, is it to the point where, um, at what point do you know that you can, you can lose money on the book in or, and make it on the back end? And how, how do you figure out that calculus? I mean, do you, do you run ads to, to give away as many copies of the books as possible? How do, you, how do you figure that all out? Or maybe that's a lot longer discussion around advertising books. Yeah, it's, it's a longer discussion. Um, we also have traditional distribution. So when we work with uh, the distributor, they obviously want to sell uh, books. <laughs> so yeah. we want to sell physical copies. Uh, we have print runs. We have inventory. So we need to make sure we actually sell. But for a business owner, I would, I would give away uh, books, as many as possible. Uh, I have a 10-minute talk uh, that's entitled how you can turn what you already know into a quarter million dollars or more. And I've 
talked to a couple of entrepreneurs who made a quarter, um, quarter million dollars or more, like one million or more through their book. And only one of them did it through royalties. All the others did it through the back end. Mm -hmm. So whatever um, they are selling and, you know, it's the book that gets into the right hands and, you know, the reader realizes that they actually want to work with the author because they are the authority on the subject. They wrote the book and, you know, they want to work with them to, to get their problem solved. Right. Right. And you mentioned, um, you know, bestseller status, break that down for us. What's, what's the state of the art for that now? Cause I, I know a lot of people who have achieved bestseller status. I also know people who spent a lot of money and didn't hit the bestseller list that they wanted to. Right. So the two types of bestseller status are Amazon bestseller status, and then there are the big lists like USA Today, Wall Street Journal, New York Times. Uh, Amazon bestseller status is pretty easy to achieve. You only need to hit number one for one hour on Amazon, and you can claim it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, uh, it changes every hour. Uh, you need to find the right category. Uh, you need to sell more than one book. Um, because Amazon now has some sort of threshold um, that you need to sell. You actually need to sell some copies for them to uh, give away that badge. But basically, there's um, thousands of categories, and they change. Uh, and the number one book um, changes every hour, or, or rather, the algorithm recalculates everything every hour. So you have a chance at hitting that status every hour. Whereas the big list. <clears throat> For example, USA Today only has 150 slots a week. So mm. that's for the 150 top selling books in the US that week. Um, usually, to hit the USA Today list, you need to sell at least 6,000 books in that week. Um, when you hit the USA Today list, you will uh, almost always hit the Wall Street Journal list as well, because that probably requires about 3,000 sales a week. Mm. And then there's New York Times. New York Times is an editorial list. So that means that you might have the sales and be number one on the USA Today list. And New York Times might not showcase you. If they don't like you or if they don't like your publisher, they might say, thanks, but no thanks. Uh, you're not going to be a New York Times bestseller. It's so, so strange. You would think it's yeah. objective, but it's not. <laughs> no. Wow. So that's why we never, we can so we guarantee USA Today bestseller because we know um, how to achieve those sales, but we cannot guarantee New York times because it's an editorial list. Mm, yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. I, I, I've heard stories about people who have, you know, hit certain lists and not the new, like really high numbers and still didn't hit the New York times list. Um, yes. and, and I want to ask about, uh, we're running a little short on time, but, um, I do want to ask about the what what is the point these days of brick and mortar bookstores? You know, especially we're recording this in January of 2021 in the midst of the pandemic. And and so, you know, people aren't going to bookstores right now. But what is the point of still being in bookstores? All right. So right now it's you know a bit of a, a weird time, but I'm pretty sure we're gonna open up the bookstores and <clears throat> other other brick and mortar facilities in a matter of months. And you know, it's it's reach. So there's this person that might be in the bookstore and will see your book and read your book and click on your link and then do business with you because they saw your book in the bookstore. Um, And, you know, depending on what your business is, depending on what you're selling, that can be an extra, you know, fill in the blanks for, you know, whatever your price point is. Um, So that's why it matters to, to be in bookstores and libraries as well. And, you know, wherever you can get. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, well, we're running a little short on time. So um, last two questions that I always enjoy asking. So first, I'm a big fan of gratitude. So when you look at peers, others in your industry, maybe others who are clients of yours or others who are thought leaders doing similar types of things, who do you admire? Who do you respect? I, I respect, and you know, it's not just talk because it's, I think actions uh, are a better testament to what you believe in. Uh, so I mentioned the London Mastermind uh, led by Dean Jackson. And I think Dean is one of the uh, biggest geniuses, marketing geniuses alive right now. So he's the one that helped me. He's the one that asked me the right questions uh, for me to come up with Leaders Press. And I will always credit that, you know, give him credit for that. Uh, I dedicated our first Leaders Press book to him. 
And um, yeah, I'll always look at him as the person who helped us come up with this. So definitely he's the one. Cool. And then um, final question. So let's pretend we're at an awards banquet, much like the Oscars or the Emmys. You're receiving a Lifetime Achievement Award for everything you've done up until this point. What we all want to know is who do you thank? You know, in addition to family and friends who are, who are colleagues, who are peers, who are, who are mentors, you know, business partners, coaches, uh, who would you acknowledge in your remarks? Right. Dean again, that would be the first. And then I would have to, I would definitely have to mention my team. So, you know, they do so much amazing work. Um, you know, they're, they're the ones doing all the nitty gritty stuff, right? I'm here doing the glamorous interviews and they're mm -hmm. the ones doing the writing and the editing and the proofing and the, you know, um, <clears throat> never ending emails with the clients. And for sure, the various masterminds that I belong to, mm -hmm. we're part of a mastermind together. Mm -hmm. I belong to a bunch of others. I learned so much there. Uh, I think it's a huge part of, um, where I am today. I just le learned so much. And Any other ones you want to give uh, credit to or give shout outs to? Right. So the ones that uh, have um, helped me a lot is JVMM. Mm -hmm. So uh, shout out to uh, Dove, Gord Dove Gordon. Mm -hmm. um, Genius Network uh, mm -hmm. that, I, yeah, that I'm in. So shout out to Joe Polish, the creator of Genius Network. Um, these are the, the two that I will mention right now that have had the biggest um return on so to speak cool cool great all right alinka this has been great so where can people go to learn more about you and leaders press right so go to leaderspress.com and wait for the annoying pop-up and <laughs> put in your name to get a copy of outsource your book doc outsource your book outsource your Excellent. book will get the ebook and the audiobook if you like to listen i bet you like to listen because you're listening to this podcast yes exactly I'm, I'm certainly a big fan of audiobooks so that's cool you give that away um excellent alinka thanks so much thank you john thank you for listening to the smart business revolution podcast with john corcoran find out more at smartbusinessrevolution.com and while you're there sign up for our email list and join the revolution 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 and be listening for the next episode of the smart business revolution podcast